January 1, 2023. Wow. Happy New Year's, everyone. This next year is either going to be the same old, same old with very, very harsh consequences in the metaverse for everybody in Denver that will affect the mortal world like it's never seen before. And I, I'm really sorry, folks. I, I, uh, I tried to talk nice for years, let y'all know what was coming, what was going on in the family court system, and what was going on with the kid children, and, and looking at what they're saying, and what's happening with our children, and now seeing what's what manifested in my children. See, I'm, I'm actually too old to be having children in, in the Denver public schools, and I just survived my last child through that system. And going through that system, I, I learned to where I didn't have a voice. And wherever I walked, when I demanded to speak to somebody, there was always a, a police officer, a school officer there, which was good because I needed him to be a witness for me as much as I, and they didn't realize that they, they, that they leveled the playing field when they brought the officer, which was fine with me. I prefer every, wherever I go. Um, because then you know, you know, because most of the time, you know, but if you watch that movie, Your Honor, oh, what a, that dude, guy that played Breaking Bad, Cranston, I think, uh, I just know he is an unbelievable actor, and, and then the part that he played, the judge, where his son, um, accidentally killed a, um, a mob boss's son uh, on his motorcycle, and um, he took off, but the judge that he portrayed when he when he got off the bench and he started talking to to the people and and got involved, it, it took for me. It it, it took. It, it was like something I've been waiting to see a judge do. Like you just sit up there. What do you? And he came down and he talked and he. He, he let everybody know who was in command of that court room, that court case, and the jury that was watching this, and that the two lawyers who were defending the respondent or the petitioner or the defendant and the victim, the state versus you, Feds versus you, city versus you, you versus nobody, because you ain't got nothing. And what you do, they're coming to take it. With that said, this, this 2023, I've been telling everybody, especially the media, they don't realize that they have um, absolute authority over what they kind of do. And when they've been manipulating, manipulating, and not going, and because they're, oh, the wrong guy's telling us about things, and then they go and have to talk about the metaverse. And as soon as the identifiers start talking about the metaverse that I've been talking about for years, blockchain technology for years, you got guy just because he puts an IT between his name? No, he's nothing like me. Tell them to go away. And you got like a city council guy came up with a bot that imitates a Denver mayor. He's destroyed. Don't even, what, that right there, oh, I'm going to do a buck. Nothing to help. No, do, do trickery. Just look at his picture. He looks like a joker. Go point some, paint, paint a, um, some joker face on Matt's, on that dude's face, and you'll see he's just a joker. Another, another pitchy coop. Flunky China, I'm a fucking, I'm, I'm the cross between a, a crotch and a vagina. I'm that space in between the blah, blah, and the John John. That's what he is. In my world, in my metaverse, because I said so. He can say what he wants with me, but he best be careful because I don't go look at his shit. I don't need to. I look at his face, I can do object-oriented programming and chite him up and then go into all of his social channels, which I've already done. My social channels are inert. You probably all don't know what that means. I don't need people liking me and following me and having all their dirty pig doo-doo shit all over me. No. We're, we're, we moved away three years ago from, I got 20 million fucking followers, man. Unless you're an entertainer, then you're, that doesn't count. And even then... Uh, entertainers that don't entertain on the digital where they got like they're only following six people 
and they got a million followers that only a few people get away with that but that's going to start not being the case because he has to interact. You can't just be, look, I go, I follow one person. So the people that they're following, I'm going to tell you how this works. They go negative. Because he can't, unless those are the only ones he contacts. And, can, and then that leaves out the people that are following him. And they're just looking at all the stuff that he wants to post in his metaverse. Which is up to him and how he decides he wants to portray himself in the digital world. And most entertainers will just do what they want and be them and that's what makes them them because there's only them <laughs> and so now when you understand how now voice and gps and all this stuff now is all about who who's going to be connected to the most powerful on the web and right now i saw this happening many many years ago folks in 2000 Actually, 1996, when I opened up my first Gmail account, and I knew when I opened up my first Gmail account because my pop told me that once I, because my dad was a reliability engineer for every search, Honeywell, General Electric, Honeywell Bull, which bought out General Electric, um, and then he went to, um, he stayed with uh, Honeywell Bull for a long time, and then he got laid off, and they, that's when they were laying off guys that were that were with him for 25 years, and or 23 years or so, <clears throat> and right before the retirement, where my dad would get his package and stuff, and uh, um, that was the first time I seen a big ass Irishman Viking. My pops was um, a very strict I uh, Irish Roman Catholic Republican military family. One of the most generous men you'd ever met. I love my father so fucking much, man, and that's what I miss the most. And I don't believe that God would put such a man in my life. To raise me and be my white savior. Because that's what it was, folks. When people talk about um, white privilege, I'll tell you about my dad's white privilege. He worked his fucking ass off, man. He gave me stuff that, uh, that um, he, I knew he wanted to go do certain things. And I knew that he couldn't because he had too many kids. And... Uh, and he didn't care. I know he did care, but he just blew it off because that's what he was an engineer. He, he accept what he could and couldn't do in the story. He didn't even want to talk about it, but I had to always talk about it because I, I wanted to know what, how he did that, how he was able to detach himself from such a... I couldn't detach myself from Santa Claus until I was 13 years old because he was the only thing pure that I thought was in my life at that time growing up in a white family and the darker, we had a pool, a 40, a 20 by 40 foot swimming pool, folks. 20 by 40 foot. It was like 10 and a half feet deep. My dad had to get a special thing and the pool's still there. So anybody who wants to check it out, yeah, I can take you there. But my, my, my dad and all his brothers, they were all six, eight that they couldn't jump off the diving board because they hit their head on the bottom of the pool. So they, had it trenched a little more so that they could dive into the pool. My brother David was an Olympic. At 15 years old, was going against Mark Spitz in the 72 Olympic 100 meter butterfly. And uh, he passed away in uh, June 2000, or May 2020. My dog died. And everybody's like, oh, you gotta you go through these bad events. No, man, people die. Oh, it's not a bad event. My dog was 15 years old. You know, the sad thing about that is that he waited until I left where he could just die outside. And someone else could find him and not me find him because I would just be devastated. I was devastated when my daughter called me. Told me she couldn't find Zion. I said, go look outside. I'm not going to tell the rest of the story, but you know it. Because I'll start crying. I'll sound weak. And uh, I'm definitely not weak. I do like to cry. That's how I got the lines on my face. Because I'd rather cry and have lines on my face so that I can plot my next mission than to become combatant, destructive, threatening to where I'm put in a box where I can't get out. It's not conducive to my nature. Or I would have done that a long time ago. <laughs> You heard me.
FBI. But I've been taught to love law enforcement, man. All my dad's brothers were war heroes and the Nelsons of Brooklyn, man. Go look them up. They got buildings named after these people. Unfortunately, I'm not part of them people because that's how they thought back then. They were hardcore, man. I thought my dad's brothers would celebrate his generosity and adopted adopt three children that were um, Native and Central American Indian. And uh, they didn't like the whole adoption thing, period. Out of 13 brothers and sisters, I think only five were the five disowned my dad. And it broke his heart. But that's a, for another story. And my dad was friends with uh, Nelson Rockefeller. And everyone, when I was little, I'd go, Dad, I don't want to tell people you know Nelson Rockefeller. Um, they just laugh at me. He's like, son, some things are just better left unsaid. I said, yeah, but Nelson Rockefeller. He said, yeah, but I didn't, I didn't get to spend no money with him. I didn't go do things. I just, I was in the military. And I served at Luke Air Force Base. And I was a staff sergeant. We got to meet certain people. I was a non-commissioned officer. And I think that's what it is. I'm not sure. Please check that out. I. That's just what happened. So I don't think my dad would lie to me. Um, so uh, he... Uh, would go on to tell me the things about like my mom's family and you know that you know we my, we'd always go to the um, Wrigley Mansion in Arizona I called it the birthday building the birthday cake building and um but I say birthday building everybody all called it the wedding cake or but if you look it up it's called the Wrigley's Mansion it was close to the bar ass ranch where I did an, uh, a one turn as a um, uh, cowboy um, at Barras Ranch, and all I did was show shit. <laughs> and then I got to see the cows get, because cow shit doesn't bother me as much as dog poo poo does. So uh, I was shoveling it, I was learning how to, you know, corral the cows and all kinds of stuff. And then I saw the cow shockers and the, the sticks, and I didn't like those too much, but um, anyways, I saw how they slaughtered them, and when that slaughter thing don't work, they gotta shoot them, and the, the bullet ricochets sometimes when the cow moves. Anyways, I just didn't wanna do that no more. <clears throat> and so, I, I like Yellowstone. Um, I like that. I like that uh, show. <clears throat> And uh, I like Beth Dalton. I like chicks like that. I like a chick that won't take no shit from nobody, including me. Cause then you walk all over them, man. I wouldn't walk all over them. I'm not. I wouldn't have a girlfriend like that. I don't. I can't have a girl that has no balls. <laughs> She's got to have some balls. She got to be able to stick up for herself if I'm not around. And then that's the case. We better watch out because she'll throw down. Every girl I had would throw down with anybody. That's a fact, people. My mother and my kids, she um, carried a little bat around with her in her backpack. A little, little bat. You could see it sticking out of the backpack, but I think it could do damage, man. I was like, what are this chick? Other girls had guns, man. I'm like, whoa, I don't even carry weapons except my nunchucks. But uh, I, I used to do throwing stars, but I came up with this really cool bag. It's a training bag called uh, the G core, and um, it, it's all, it's just a core. It just looks like a blob, but it is filled with um, some bitching stuff, and we're gonna launch it. But it, it's like a core without the arms and legs. You can grab it, you can flip it, you can do some crazy stuff with it. When you say flipping it, you're flipping it, and you're landing on the ground. That's what I do at 63. But um, I'm not in the best shape of the world, but I can still do what I got to do. And that's the part is you just don't stop. Yeah, it hurts. Yeah, you're going to get pain. Don't take no fucking medicines. Just take your vitamins. Eat your vegetables, folks. Eat that spinach. Have you seen my hair? Yeah, I, I dye it. I've been dying it my whole life. I wish I didn't. It has some really cool, I'd have really cool gray 
um, almost white color hair. But I've been dying it so long, I just, wow. But it'll be a time where I'll stop dying it and I'll go from looking kind of just red, you know, regular color hair to be, boom, instant. Oh man. And so it adds 10 more years on you. So if I look 50, or if I look, if I look 60, then I'll definitely look 70. So that's how that works. And all them creams and all that shit. You're worried about lines and wrinkles. And look at my face. Oh, she looks good. And then she's 80. And it's like, wow, what happened to Dolores? She stopped using all those creams and that Botox while it killed all those muscles on her face. So now there's really nothing else to, to, to attached to anything. So her face droops worse than it ever did. And so now she's got to go get her face aired up with air. <laughs> Folks, man, or this gel. All right, right there. Two and a half pounds of pressure. You're all set, Janet. You look marvelous. Thank you, doctor. I just worry about if if a bee stung me in the face, would my would my face pop? Uh, definitely would. But let's just hope that don't happen. Have a good day. Next.